Hello and welcome to the Back to Being podcast, where I speak with experts, practitioners and everyday people about living a more healthy, active and mindful life. My name is Kareem Rushdie and I've spent over a decade learning to transform my own chronic pain and stress so I can lead a life worth living. Now I'm using what I've learned along the way, as well as the knowledge and experience of my guests to share unique perspectives that can help you do the same. Thank you for tuning in today. Today I'm speaking with someone who's as passionate as I am about using his lived experience to help others struggling with chronic pain and stress. Peter Studenik's life was turned upside down after he was diagnosed with tinnitus following a concert. Overwhelmed and frightened, unable to concentrate or even get a good night's sleep, Peter sank into hopelessness and despair. Refusing to give up, he sought out help from various experts, including neurologists, homeopaths, Chinese medicine practitioners, nutritionists, and body movement specialists. However, none of them were able to provide any relief. After struggling for three years, Peter decided to take a more holistic approach, inspired by the latest research into prolonged tinnitus, which affects over 7 million adults in the United Kingdom alone. Armed with this newfound knowledge, a renewed sense of motivation, and the support of skilled practitioners, Peter was able to completely cure his tinnitus and has been free of that incessant ringing in the ears since 2013. Together we reflect on Peter's experience, the framework he found so effective on his path to healing, and his realization that resolving the underlying causes of his tinnitus was essential to his recovery. This episode is essential listening for anyone struggling with tinnitus, or interested in the mind-body connection, and the connection between our psychological, emotional, and physical health. Enjoy the conversation. So Peter, thank you so much for sharing your time with me today. I'm really, really excited about this conversation. Thank you for inviting me. When I heard from you, it resonated with me because like me, you have had a condition, which is a chronic condition, which many people said there is no way to fix, no way to cure. You know, you just have to live with it. And we'll talk a lot more about that in this conversation. But also like me, you decided that you're going to find a way through this and you have created a really you know interesting framework a methodology that we're going to hear more about for overcoming tinnitus which so many people suffer from so i'm really happy that you can share that information with us and hopefully it helps a lot of other people as well hope so as well yeah so to start with peter maybe we, we go back a bit we'll come to the tinnitus and the framework and the method that you used a little bit later but maybe you can just share a little bit about who you are and who you were before you, you know you had tinnitus so maybe a little bit about your your life and and how it actually came to happen how did you discover and become diagnosed with tinnitus all right so i'm peter studeni tinnitus specialist maybe i will start where i was because i changed a lot of things in my life to cure tinnitus or i was young manager in corporation into the money, into the traveling, fast cars. I did extreme sports, slope style on skis and aggressive inline skating. It was my life. Adrenaline was my drug. And also I was married and yeah, kind of lived life, but I was not happy with this life. But at the time I thought that I was happy, but I was not. Okay. And I want to come, I want to come back to that because I think that that contributed potentially to the tinnitus, right? That, that unhappiness that was beneath the surface. Yeah, definitely. And I, I also started a company, the pizzeria or the restaurant, and I was working for 14 hours a day, right? Even on weekends and it took the toll. Yeah. So when I was around 31 or 32, I went to concert and it was very loud. And after this concert, the tinnitus started like instant ringing in ears. Mm -hmm. Also sensitivity to sounds. And I started to go to doctors. Everybody told me that there is no cure. I need to get used to it. But it was not not option for me because I suffered a lot. I could not sleep. I could not concentrate on anything. Mm. 
you never had any issues with your, with your ears or your hearing before that. It was only from going to the concert. And then after the concert, that exposure to the loud noise is what mm. set I don't off. remember anything. Maybe after some concert or some parties when I was a teenager, there was a ringing in the ears during the night. Yeah, we've all been there when we party, yeah, yeah, party yeah. too hard. Yeah, yeah. But Actually, it usually goes away. Yeah, it's called disco tinnitus. Okay. And Temporary. Okay, if you have it like one or two days, it's absolutely okay. Mm -hmm. After three days or more, it became chronic. And this is the problem where people suffer. Okay. Okay. Maybe you can share a little, like, what is tinnitus? Of course, there, there'll be people listening who know, who've experienced it, who are suffering with it. But for those that don't, I mean, when I think of tinnitus, I just think of ringing in the ears. But that's a very simple way of thinking about it, isn't it? Yeah, I'm very accurate. <laughs> <laughs> because, yeah, it could be like a whistling, it could be ringing, it could be, it could be some strange noises in your ears. And mostly what defines an is that there is some sound in your ears which is very, very unpleasant. Mm. And as it is unpleasant, you are focused on that. And then it become even more unpleasant. Okay. I want to come back to, to that because, you know, it's something that we talk about a lot in, in mindfulness is that attention and awareness has a tendency to contract around the unpleasant and around discomfort. We think we're pushing it away, but actually we are, we are really focusing yeah. on that unpleasant sensation or, or thought or emotion. And in this case, you know, that, that noise in your ear. So as you say, it's something that becomes the center of your attention, I guess. Yeah, exactly. And I will explain you later how the brain works and why this happens. Great, great. It is actually a very, very ancient mechanism, which leads to survival or help us survive in the past. Right, right. Okay, we'll come, we'll come to that. Yeah. All right. So, tinnitus is ringing, whistling, strange noises, and it is very unpleasant. It is maybe the most like simple and accurate definition. Mm -hmm. And it could be the sensitivity to sounds. So as well as having that unpleasant sound constantly in the ear, mm -hmm. you also become more sensitive to, to sounds coming from the outside as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very hard for me when, when someone was like reading newspapers in the same room, it hurt me. Wow. And for example, restaurant and all the forks and knives, it was unbearable. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, these are noises that you can imagine can be irritating to most people. If it's yeah. you know, somebody smacks a fork down on the plate or yeah. cuts the knife with the plate. But if you have that sensitivity, it must be really unpleasant. It really hurts. So you say it hurts. You, when you say it hurts, is it, is, is there kind of a pain that comes with it? Is it a psychological hurt? What does that mean when you say that it hurts? Imagine ambulance. Mm -hmm on the road and you are very near the ambulance and it also it's not only unpleasant it hurts a little bit yeah yeah you kind of you, you cringe yeah. you back away from the noise almost yeah. because you have the muscles in the ears and these muscles are very stretched in this environment which is very loudy mm. and then this muscle hurts so it's psychological but also physical so as well physical. yeah and I'm wondering, Peter, when you were going, when this first happened and you were going, you know, to see doctors and specialists, was it a quick diagnosis? Did they know immediately what it was? And, and how was, like, how was the experience in the kind of mainstream medical system with this? Because, you know, a lot of these conditions, the answer is simply, you have to learn to live with it, which is, you know, not, not something we want to hear. But what, what was your experience like within the medical system when you first were diagnosed? Okay. Yeah, it was very, like, quickly diagnosed. I went to doctor maybe after a few days, I guess after one week, because I still believe that it will go away. Mm -hmm. But when it doesn't, I start to read about it on the internet. I was, like, really scared. I saw that my life ended at the time mm -hmm. because there was no hope on the internet, like, 10 years ago. 
like no articles, no books, etc. So I was really scared and I go there and they made some exam on my ears. Everything was fine. There was no damage. I went to some like sound tests and everything was quite good to my age. But there was only this ringing in ears. I suppose when you don't have the ringing in your ears, it sounds like a small thing. Oh, just some ringing in the ears. Yeah. But when it's there 24-7, yeah. uh, it's a different story. Very different story. When you can't sleep, you can't sleep and you can't concentrate and you don't have joy. I mean, how did it affect? And one of the questions I wanted to ask you is how before you, and we'll, we'll come to, you know, the, the, the framework that you found very effective, but before you discovered that framework, mm-hmm. before you did your research, before you started trying things, how was the tinnitus impacting your life? I mean, you mentioned sleep, not being able to find joy, you know, in, in life. I mean, maybe you can expand a little bit on what it was like to, to live with this condition. Okay, so from like happy boy, full of life, full of energy, I became total introvert. Mm-hmm. I avoid people in the world, no creativity, no proactivity. And I was avoiding sounds, I was avoiding people, I was avoiding traveling, everything. Only like to lie in the bed without any noises or go to nature sometimes. Mm. And it's a common story, isn't it? I mean, I, I think, of course, with the tinnitus, you have that, that sensitivity to sound, which is another dimension. But I think any, you know, I've spoken and worked with many people suffering from chronic conditions, chronic pain. And it's a similar story. We retreat from life yeah you know, and because i mean i think part of it is energy levels it, it mm-hmm. requires so much energy to get through each day and then because yeah. we're not because we're not sleeping well that energy is not recharged and refreshed and we're always kind of thinking about managing our energy oh if i go and see this person it's going to drain me if i go out for this activity i'm you know not going to have the energy to do something else i want to do mm-hmm. later now in your case you had the added element of sound causing pain both physical somatic and and psychological pain for you so i can't imagine what that was like and this was for how many years four four years that you were suffering three years and nine months okay and uh, three years i was desperate but after three years i found the way how to cure it and this nine months was much better because there was progress and my and i just started to decrease and I know that I will be okay. There's some hope. There was some hope. Yeah, that yeah, changes That yeah. changes everything. Before we come to the way that you found and discovered, but I, I'd like to also ask relationships. I mean, you mentioned that you didn't like to, or didn't have the capacity to interact with people, to spend time mm-hmm. with other people. You preferred to be alone. I mean, how did that work with your relationships, both your intimate relationships, but also friend group and, and colleagues and things like that? Okay. With my best friend, we had this company, this restaurant. Uh, I had to cut it. I had to like sell this company and I sold it to him because I was not able to work in the restaurant. Like, I was avoiding parties, everything. When we were invited, I rather stayed home and didn't want to go anywhere. And in the work, I just want to be surrounded by quiet environment. So avoiding every project which were large group of people or including traveling, et cetera. Because I was traveling mm. quite a lot around the world. But with the I would like to just stay at home and go to work, home, go to work, home and nothing else. So, I can imagine. Is air travel very difficult with tinnitus? Does the pressure affect it or would it just be the noise of the plane? Can that be yeah, challenging? Yeah. Well, for me, actually, everything was so, so, so loud. And it, the problem was that my tinnitus started after this loud concert. So I was afraid of loud sounds. Mm-hmm. So even if these sounds were not like very loud, I was so afraid of them that I just avoided it because I thought that when I 
will be exposed to another loud sound, it will be even worse. Yeah, right. Now, under understandably, it sounds very isolating, right? It sounds yeah. very, very isolating. It was very isolating, and I I just felt the fear and stress. And stress and fear are the biggest things which will increase your tinnitus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that was my next question. I mean, do they know what, what causes this condition? Is it something that, yeah, is it something that's only caused by exposure to loud music? Can it come on if somebody has not had that experience with, with loud mm -hmm. sounds? Yeah. Yeah, sometimes it's loud noise, sometimes it's a problem with neck after injury, for example. Sometimes it's after ear or nose infection. Even sometimes it could be after vaccination. Sometimes there is like weeks or stress and you don't sleep. And after that, you start to hear ringing in ears. So the first few causes you mentioned are more structural, right? So like injury to the neck or you have an infection, you know, something has happened within the structure of the, of the ear, but then you're also saying stress, yeah, being depleted, not getting yeah. enough sleep. So lifestyle can also cause this condition. I would say it this way. For example, imagine you have a barrel of gun mm -hmm. and this gunpowder is your life, the stressful life. And in this stressful life, you are adding more and more and more and more powder. Mm -hmm. And then some injury came, some loud exposure came, some infection came, and this is the spark. Right. And it blows. Right. But if your bottle of gun is empty, even if there is a spark, nothing happens. So it's, it's well-being, isn't it? If we have well-being, if we're taking care of our well-being, yeah. uh, we are much less likely to suffer from not just a condition like tinnitus, but any illness or injury. But when we are Definitely. low battery, low energy, depleted, stressed, tired, etc., then the immune system is also suppressed and we become much more fragile, right? much more prone to these kind, of, these kind of things happening. So you, and by the sound of it, the life you had been living up to that point, there was stress, there wasn't much yeah. sleep. You said adrenaline was the drug. You were living on the edge, right? Yeah. The biggest problem in my case and in case of many others was that I thought that I am living a happy life. I can see now how bad it was from today. Because today I'm living absolutely different life. But at the time, I thought that it is okay. So... When something told me you are in stress, I said, no, I'm happy. I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm okay. But there was a tinnitus. Yeah. Well, they, you know, they say that the, we all suffer, of course. I mean, suffering is a part yeah. of, of life, but they say the, the worst kind of suffering is when we're suffering and we don't know that we're suffering. Yeah. Then mindfulness is not there. Conscious awareness is not there. And we are yeah. on autopilot. And as you say, many people will say, no, life is, life is good until something like this happens. And, and yeah. it sounds to me like this was a blessing and a curse for you because of course, terrible suffering, but somehow you've come out much more aware, much more attuned to your body and your well-being. So yeah, really excited to hear kind of what that journey was like, that yeah. path that you took. It was blessing, but I can see it only now. Right. At that time, it was like curse. Yeah, and of course. Today, I can see, yes, it was blessing, but at the time, I was so desperate that I will do anything to not have it. So what was the kind of turning point? You know, you say you had those three years of pain and suffering and just wishing for your old life back, wishing for things to be different. What was the turning point? How did that hope appear on the horizon for you? Right. In the work, I was manager in French bank. Mm -hmm. And my work performance decreased a lot. So they decided to give me a coach to help me to get back. Okay. And I started coaching. And after a few months, my work level was quite okay. But this girl, she's like a friend of me now, the coach. 
you know, she told me that she thinks that I have some issues, like psychological issues from my childhood, some unresolved wounds or something, and it mm -hmm. will be good to explore this because I'm living on the edge. And I don't know why I'm living on the edge. So, yeah, so that, that's a response to something yeah, that happened. Yeah, I didn't know why I don't know how to relax and et cetera. And she gave me she gave me the number to her friend. She was a psychologist. I, and I didn't want to go there because I thought that to psychology only crazy guys go. Sure. So I so I'm not crazy. I don't do psychology. I'm absolutely okay. But I was so desperate, I give it a try. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I, I know what that feels like, trying anything and everything. Things that you never imagined you would try, but then yeah. your wife yeah. or a friend says, hey, try this. You just, just, desperation will make us try anything. But great, I'm glad that she did recommend this to you. Yeah, and then I went there and we were talking about childhood and she was asking me how I lived. I said my childhood was perfectly okay. And she was like asking me strange questions. And then I realized that my childhood was not so happy, that there were some issues. And she gave me her book and she said, there is a story, it's very similar to you. And I read that story, which was like similar to mine. And I started crying. And I didn't cry for 18 years before that. Wow. In 12, I didn't cry. Wow. I was like, mm, in my opinion, only girls do cry. Yeah. So I was a man and I didn't cry. So I didn't cry for 18 years. And I started to cry. And I, I remember I cried for four hours in a row. Wow. 18 years, 18 years worth of crying. Yeah. yeah. Incredible. Yeah. And when I ride home from this countryside, I still heard the ringing in ears, but it they didn't bother me. Interesting. So it hadn't it hadn't changed in intensity or volume, but it was just the way you related to it was changing. It was same so volume, happened. it was same intensity, but yeah. it didn't bother me. And I knew that if something inside of me is suppressed as this sadness, mm -hmm. I cannot be happy. And I believe that when I heal these bounds in me, it will lead to cure. So just that experience of reading the book, letting those emotions out. Yeah, four hours crying. I would yeah, and then that knowledge that something had shifted now that yeah. those emotions were starting to come out. Something had shifted. And the, and yeah. The, yeah, yeah. I can relate. I can relate. I mean, when I first discovered the power of meditation for pain relief, the pain didn't go away. The pain was still there. But the way I related to it, the way I looked at it, the way I felt it is what started to change. And it sounds like you were on a similar kind of journey then. What, what happened next? What happened next? I came home and there was like very big switch on what I trying to find on the internet. Okay. I absolutely stopped reading like desperate stories mm -hmm. i stopped reading or listening to doctors which told you that there is no cure and i was trying to find success stories and i found one and i found some and i read them and some were from people some like a personal box yeah and one was from dr pavel yastrebo from university of yale Okay. And he actually was a neurologist, not the ENT specialist. Mm -hmm. He looked at tinnitus from the neurologist point of view. And okay. I read his book and I immediately knew inside of me that this is the way to cure it. So fascinating. You know, just going back to the shift that you said a switch was flicked where you stopped looking at all the negative stories of yeah. you know people with this condition or doctors or this condition, and you shifted to look at the positive because what we were saying earlier when our energy is low our well-being is low yeah. we're not in a good frame of mind we are drawn to the negative 
yeah. we fix on the negative, but then you had this, this emotional shift that caused you to start looking at the positive. I think it's really amazing how that happened. So you got some hope and you realized that actually there's more to it than the structure of my ear. This has, this is yeah. bigger, bigger than that. Because 99% of tinnitus sufferers are absolutely fine. There is no problem in ears or brain. They are 100% healthy. No structural issues. No basically. structural damage, no structural problems, no objective reasons. Well, it's like Howard Schubner, who I know you saw that, yeah, that conversation yeah. I had with him. And he talks about, you know, all pain is brain generated and only some of that pain, in fact, with chronic conditions, almost none of that pain is linked to something in the body. It's all happening up there in the brain. Yeah. yeah and, and then Howard is like, I don't know how to say it, but I was so happy to watch your podcast and, and read his blog because this is exactly what has happened with tinnitus. Right. So you went on a similar journey, a similar treatment yeah. plan as the one that Dr. Schubner recommends for all yeah. kinds of, of chronic pain. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it's weird, it, it's weird, but it's not that weird because, you know, you know, it's true, right? I mean, it's, it's true. It works. So you see now a lot of different kind of schools of, of thought coming together yeah. uh, and realizing the same thing, <laughs> you know, realizing the same, the same truth. Yeah, and if chronic pain and chronic tinnitus are very similar, uh, very similar root cause, then the objective reason structure reason is excluded. So the first thing of healing, the first phase of this healing was excluding this. And I encourage everybody with tinnitus or any condition, go to the specialist and have a proper check, ENT check, neurology check that you are absolutely okay. And after that, only you can start what we were talking about. Right. Yeah. No, I think that's an important, that's an important point to make because of course there are some cases where it is linked to something structural, something in the, yeah. in the body. Yeah. So yeah, no, I totally agree. So go and, you know, Western medicine is great for yeah. its diagnostic capabilities and technology. So get those scans, do the checks. And only if there's no structural issues, then you, you know that you have another option right, which yeah. you're going to share with us today and also don't be worried because majority of chronic tinnitus people have no structural problem or objective reason okay that's good to know so when it's acute cases is it more often linked to structural issues but for chronic cases it's often no structural issue okay so let me explain how tinnitus starts yeah please because mm, tinnitus starts always with this acute phase after the concert, after the illness, after the injury, after the stress period. Mm -hmm. And some people, they hear tinnitus from time to time, but it never became chronic. And it's because we have in brain, which is called hypothalamus, mm -hmm. and it's a filter of environment. For example, now, when you hear me, you don't hear birds around you or other noises because you are focused on me. Mm -hmm. And your brain saying that Peter's voice is important now. Listen to that. Yeah, bring it to the bring it yeah. to the front of your attention. Yeah. But if there will be some strange noise around you, your brain will switch. And you will not listen to me, but you will listen to this strange noise because it could be dangerous. Yeah, that's a survival mechanism, threat detection mechanism, yeah. Same when we will go to restaurant and someone say Peter, you will not notice. But when someone will say Karim, you will immediately like look that direction because Karim is very important sound for your brain and it's always increased by your brain. Mm. Mm. So that's why Donald Trump loves listening to himself speak. <laughs> okay, so, so all right, so we've got hypothalamus, which is the filter for all of the stimulation that's coming in from the environment. Yeah. Uh, and it focuses, it prioritizes for us what is important, yeah. what is not. What yeah. is important, what is dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Mostly dangerous things, amplifies. Yeah, well, it seems like everything we do, everything we think, 
all seems to come back to survival when you when you trace it back, doesn't it? Yeah, we have yeah. these mechanisms in ourselves. Yeah. So when tinnitus became important or dangerous, it's amplified. So example, you have tinnitus for a few days, you are quite okay. Every I was okay like first two days. I was scared a little bit, but nothing like I was sleeping, for example. Okay. But when I started to read about tinnitus. I go to medical specialist and then, oh my God, I was terrified. The fear. I, my tinnitus increased maybe 10 times. So as more fear came around the tinnitus, around what was yeah. happening, the intensity of the experience yeah. also increased. Yeah. Before, if the tinnitus is dangerous sound for you, your ancient mechanism in your cell will increase it. So can I ask you, Peter, a quick side note, do you still have some of that sound if you, if, if it's completely silent now, and if you were to tune in, would you still hear that sound? Is it there in the background or has it um, actually gone for you? I don't hear any ringing anymore or whistling anymore. When I'm like, okay, when I will go to the toilet and I will put like fingers in my ears, I can, mm -hmm. I can hear something like very, very soft white noise, something like waterfall one kilometer away from you. And it is a very pleasant sound. Yeah. Yeah. I think I know, I think most of us have that when we, you know, after, um, when I'm meditating, there is that just, and it's a nice kind of buzz. Yeah, I know, I know. The the sound ringing, it though, I was able to see or hear the ringing, even if the train was passing by. Just yeah. engaging the difference. Yeah. 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 I can, I can imagine. So you found out about the role of the hypothalamus in all of this. Yeah. Um, and then how, what, what did you do with that information? How did you kind of turn that information into something practical? I yourself? would say one, one important thing, how Dr. Pavel Yastrebo started or why he started, because this is very important for tinnitus sufferers. Mm -hmm. There was some research maybe 50 years ago on students in some medical school. And these students were going to soundproof room one by one. And these researchers told them, go there and listen to some noise or some sound, which we will play to. It will be very low volume, but we will play something for you. Mm -hmm. They came out and some students are ringing, some whistling, some white noise, some other noises, but these researchers didn't play anything. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> and 90% of these healthy students heard something. Heard something, yeah. So tinnitus, tinnitus problem is not that you hear something, but why for someone he's not perceiving it at all, and for someone this tinnitus is ruining the life. Yeah, right. And there is a key to hearing. Right, right. We all have some noises or other uh, in our ears. There is like in electrical my... activity in the noise. Yeah, right. So there is something, yeah. but when you are in stress, it's increased very much. And if this is increased and also your brain started to put it on the first place, then this is disaster. Right. So what I started. Yeah. 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 Now, Carrie, I, I really want to know what, what came next. So first of all, when you study the brain, when you are in stress, your brain works differently. Mm -hmm. When you go with a bunch of friends in the wood and you will be talking and you will feel safe, you will not hear like sounds around. Mm -hmm. It will be okay. But you will go to this forest alone in the night. You will hear 50, Everything. 500 yeah. meters from you, like some branch breaking. Yeah, yeah. Because your brain knows that you are in a dangerous situation and it needs to increase your senses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you become hypervigilant, right? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. And this has a psychological part and it has a physical part. Because you have a drum in your ear and there is a muscle in your ear also. And then in stress, this muscle is stretched and your drum is stretched as well. And it's like instrument. When your dr drum is not stretched, it's soft and mm -hmm. cold. But when you stretch it, it becomes higher and very loud. Yeah, right, right. So these internal sounds which you have in ears, 
when you are in stress, uh, much louder and much higher. So chronic tinnitus, actually, there's a chronic stress element to this too. When you're in a state of chronic stress, either from your lifestyle or after you get tinnitus, I guess you're stressed by the tinnitus as well. All of that stress is actually changing the physiology within the ear and causing that sound to be louder, make you more sensitive and just increase the suffering. Wow. It's like cycle, like yeah, vicious. vicious cycle. Yeah, yeah. So how to break it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the question. I'm just on the edge of my seat here. I'm waiting for the answer. So Pavel Yastrebov was studying this, and he found out that when you put another sound to your brain, which can be focused on that, your brain will put less attention to tinnitus. Mm, okay. So you break this tunnel focus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Which is increasing your tinnitus and or making this vicious cycle. And then he tried a lot of sounds and he found out that the best sounds for these are white noise and pink noise. What's pink noise? Pink noise is like like water for one kilometer from you. Okay. So it's in a similar category to the white noise, but just a different type of, of white noise. Yes, yeah. It's a different yeah. white noise and pink noise. And white noise are actually all frequencies played on same volume. Okay. And okay. pink noise is the frequencies which are higher are lower volume. So it's more pleasant for people which have problem with sound sensitivity. Oh wow. Okay, I learned something new there. Pink noise. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It's very pleasant. Actually, there are some pink noise and white noise, like teddy bears. Okay. And when child don't sleep, you put the teddy bear to the bed and start the pink noise or white noise, and it will calm nervous system down of the child and it will fall asleep. So would, would the sound of, for example, waves crashing, would that be pink noise? It will be similar to pink noise. It's not pink noise, but it will be similar. Okay. We'll do a separate podcast on pink noise. <laughs> Let's carry on with this one. It reminds me that when you know, they say if you've got a song stuck in your head, the best thing you can do is actually to, to sing another song in your head. Yes. Because that will be the only thing to, to shift the attention away from that once, once it contracts around that first song. So in a similar way, by bringing a new sound in, you break mm-hmm. that, that kind of focus. You break that attention. Yeah. So I started to listen to this pink noise based on the recommendation of Pavel Yastrebov. And there is very important thing that it must not mask your tinnitus. So the volume of the pink or white noise must be much, much lower than your tinnitus. What's the reason for that? Because when you mask this pink or white noise is louder than your tinnitus, it is very pleasant because you don't hear tinnitus and you are okay. Mm-hmm. But in the long term, it will increase your tinnitus. Oh, wow. But when you like put it on lower volume, your brain starts to, to switch. Okay, there is a tinnitus. I'm, I'm worried, but there is another sound. I need to take care about this as well. And you are breaking this connection to the tinnitus only, and then you'll be able to hear another noises as well. Mm. Just of your neighbors or relatives and dog and cooking, etc. Mm-hmm. And yeah, th- this is this is very important. Okay, okay. So how many hours a day are you listening to these white and pink? I was listening eight hours a day. Wow. So you just had it on while you were doing yeah. other things. I had like High five, pet free player. Mm-hmm. The the headphones like these earphones, but not not the earplugs because you need to still hear outside noises or sounds. Mm-hmm. Uh, but today there are some generations from Phonak, Siemens, and a lot of companies are doing this wide noise. Pink noise sound generators for tiny to suffer. So today it's much more convenient. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. But when you were when you were doing it, this was before this had become kind of mainstream 
Yeah, uh, there was some, some generations, but there was very huge and uncomfortable. So that, would you call that sound therapy? I mean, what was the yeah, okay. form of like sound therapy? Sound, sound therapy or doing it to retraining therapy. Okay, okay. And is that working alone or are there some other things that you are doing at the same time as the sound therapy? There was two things. Most important, what I invented, and it is my invention, like sound therapy is invention by Pavel Yastrebo. It's mm -hmm. my invention, but my invention was found out how to measure your tinnitus daily. So you mm -hmm. see if your tinnitus is higher today or lower today as it was yesterday. And you can compare. Wow. How do you do that? Actually, when you have this MP3 player, MP3 player, these sound generators, you put it on on the morning, and you start or play your, for example, white noise, and you going your volume down to the lowest audible level, mm -hmm. and if your tinnitus is low at that day you can go lower with this volume and you still hear it. Right. And you have a bad day, your tinnitus is higher volume and you also need to put a higher volume on your bite noise to hear it at all. Uh, so you're benchmarking the tinnitus sound against the white noise or pink noise sound and, and then kind of seeing where it's at that day. Yeah, okay. Is it clear? Because this is quite important. I hope yeah, it is. You yes, yes. So you're... So you're you're basically matching the level of the tinnitus sound using the white noise or the pink noise, but then taking note of what volume your white noise or your pink noise is at. And that's kind of telling you what volume or the intensity of the, of the tinnitus yes. on that day. Yes. So it's clear, it's clear how you do it, but then how does that actually help you? Okay. So I also created tinnitus diary. Because I had a migraine before, and I also migraine free for maybe 12 years, right? Even if I should take the pills all the life or drugs, I don't use any and I don't have any migraines. Because when I was in the doctor, they give me migraine diary. Okay. And yeah, I've it, heard of that. Yeah. And same, but when you have migraine, you know it. But with tinnitus, it was a problem that. For me, it was every day the same, every day terrible. But with this precise measuring, you see that it is not same all the time. No. And then I wrote what I eat, what I, who I met, if I encounter some stress, what I did so for exercise, et cetera. And in a few weeks, I started to see some connections that if I ate bananas, for example, my tinnitus increased. When, wow. when I met few people, my tinnitus increased. When I go to sauna, my tinnitus decreased. When I go roller skating, my tinnitus increased. So by this way, I was able to see what makes my tinnitus worse and what makes it better. Wow. Good. So you started to make a connection between certain activities, people even, diet, yeah. and the tinnitus. And what, what, was that, what was that kind of teaching you? What did you learn from that? Like, don't spend, don't spend time with this person. They, they make my tinnitus worse. But it's not the person, right? It's your, your reaction to yes. the person. Yes. The, basically, the yes. stress levels going up. Yes, definitely. So I will start with the easy things, which were food and drinks. So everything that had some artificial substances was increasing tinnitus. Okay. Because any artificial substances will trigger your nervous system and it yep. will increase your tinnitus. Is it, is it correct to say this has something to do with inflammation? So is it, is it the, because I know there's some processed foods and artificial additives they can cause inflammation in the body or is it more a uh, because i mean it is a a stress response as well and stress hormones may be released or is this more related to the nervous system in particular i think 
that the inflammation and this tinnitus increase have the same root cause. Okay. And definitely it, it is connected because we cannot separate our bodies to parts. It's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, of course. So did you cut out all of the artificial yeah. kind of ingredients and things like that? Yeah. And you noticed a change when you cut yes, these down? It went from volume 17, for example, to volume 15. Mm -hmm. So then I cut bananas, red wine, what else? Beer. But for example, cider was okay. Okay, okay. So you can still have a drink. <laughs> yeah, I still have a drink. So what else? Yeah, I know that fried meals increase my tinnitus. And yeah, sugar, definitely sugar, yes. Yeah. So in terms of diet, you, you made quite significant changes to the diet. Yeah. And I immediately I saw the results. It was not increased to zero, but it was increased for 15 or 17 to 15. And then without sugar, without fry meals, at the start, it goes to, for example, 13 or something like that. You're getting a lot of positive side effects, not only with the tinnitus, but these are all things which are just not good for our bodies anyway. So yeah. This is why I tell people that my back condition was also a, a blessing because even when I you know, was in pain and, and couldn't do a lot of things, I was healthier than I had been for many, many years just because I was being careful about you know, what yeah. I was doing to my body. I realized the importance of sleep and all those things. So in that way, you know, illness has a lot to teach us about what is well-being, right? And how to look after ourselves and not to take it for granted. Definitely, yeah. Uh... In my case, the, like, the tinnitus was like a great teacher. Yeah, right. Yeah, a wonderful teacher. Yeah. It's, it's not something you wish for anyone else, but... I it, do it, recommend this pass to anyone else. But... <laughs> but if you're already on it, if you're already on it, then yeah, yeah. it can be a yeah. real place. Take a chance. Yeah. So, the, so the diary helped. So, so tracking helped. Keeping yeah. the diary, starting to make the connection between activities, yeah. food drink people and, and the tinnitus yeah okay go on what came next for example when i found out that some people are increasing my tinnitus i would like had a meeting with my boss the next time my tinnitus was higher mm -hmm. i spoke about that with psychologist and we found out that i'm suppressing for example some anger yeah and then i started to be more assertive and I said to him, don't do this or don't do that because I don't like it. Mm -hmm. Finally, I quit the job and I found better job with better people or people which I like more. It's incredible, isn't it? It woke you up to actually realizing you are in a toxic yeah. environment. These people are not treating you in the way that you feel you should be treated. But the, what the psychologist said is so interesting. It's not actually the people, is it? It's your, it's how we react and respond to those people and their energy and their, you know, their words, their actions as well. Yeah. And one more thing I would like to say, I also get divorced. Okay. Was it a result of the tinnitus? Yes. Yes. Wow. But my ex-wife, she's not like toxic person. Mm -hmm. We are just not compatible. Okay. Okay. Oh, well, it was hard to break with her, but separated, we are much more happy, both of us. That's good. That's good to hear. So it's not, yeah, it, it did end well for, for both of you. And did you notice that period of, of separating, of going through a divorce? Did it increase the stress and the tinnitus or was it something that you felt was the, both of you felt was the right thing to do? So it had a positive kind of impact. Short term, it increased hmm. definitely because, but there was a lot of emotions. So I cried a lot and we fight quite often. So it was like some emotional leaning, I say, mm -hmm. but it was maybe two weeks and then I was not in the stress because we knew that we did the right thing. Okay, that's nice. You you don't often hear stories of divorce which are kind of positive, but it sounds we like... We are friends. We are friends now. Oh, that's really good. That's really good. 
yeah, go on with this. I, I want to hear more. So you started to make these changes, lifestyle changes. You saw the impact immediately. So you carried on making more, you know, that's the thing. You make one of these changes, you see that it works and then you realize, yeah. wow. I it was like it. oscillating. It was not like this. Yeah. It was like this. Yeah. But it was going down. Right. Right. And for example, there was also things about roller skating. So roller skating increased my tinnitus. So I was roller skating next day. My tinnitus was all, almost every time increased. So I go to physiotherapist mm -hmm. and she told me, okay, show me how you move on your skates. And then I show her and she said, okay, but your posture is very bad. And we started to work on posture. Mm -hmm. And then when I did it correctly, uh, right, roller skating didn't increase the tinnitus anymore. Who knew roller skating could make your tinnitus worse? That's so... Yeah. Right. And is it because of, when you say posture, is it because that you were putting strain on the muscles in the neck and ear? Through? Yeah, my head was forward. And yeah, I was like, before this. Yeah. On the bed. Because coming back to what you were saying earlier about that muscle that is attached to the eardrum, any strain mm -hmm. on that muscle is going to increase the area of the eardrum and, and make you more sensitive. So could be, yeah, could be. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. So, but for what is also important, and you know it from your personal story, that okay, you have diary, but you will have different findings. Mm -hmm. I, I would say artificial or processed food will increase tinnitus for everyone. Mm -hmm. But roller skating for someone could be good. For someone, the swimming can be bad. Or playing football or doing yoga. I, I heard a lot of people which practice yoga and they started to have tinnitus. Because yoga, if doing wrongly, is very bad. Yeah, yeah. I think you're saying the same thing here that I was just thinking. A framework is very different from a formula. So one of the things that I sometimes talk about is, you know, that the framework that I use, quite simple, mindfulness, exercise, diet, sleep. That's the kind of four pillars of it. But within each one of those pillars, you can customize and you can personalize and you must do that because you have to find a way for it to work for you. Some people like high intensity exercise. Other people like to go for a, a walk in the forest, as we were saying earlier. So even with, with what you're describing, there's a framework there. Yes, there's an emotional aspect to it. Yes, there's a, a tracking aspect to it. Becoming much more attuned with what you're putting in your body and how that's affecting, you know, the, the condition. Yeah. But it must be personalized. People should not be following, you know, just because <laughs> roller skating didn't work for you. It doesn't mean it's yeah. not going to work for everyone. They might have good posture, right? So they don't need to Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And actually in my book, which I wrote about tinnitus, there are six steps and these six steps is some formal keys, how to get complete relief, but mm, these steps will differ from one to another. Right. Understand. Understand. So I wanted to ask you about the book, you know, I will put a link to the book in the show notes so people can check it out if they want to get more. I guess the book is a more detailed version of your story, but then as you say, it's also mm -hmm. got these six steps outlined. So what yeah. is the works in a more structured way, right? There is a blog also on my side and mostly they will find a lot of things, how to start or how to do it. But the book is structured and polished and it is easy to follow then. And why did you write the book? Why did you, you know... Sharing your experience is one thing, but you've gone much further than that. You wrote a book, you're putting content out there. You're trying to share this with as many people as possible. Why? What is it that's motivated you to do that? My biggest motivation is to avoid suffering others. Because I suffered so much. I know how bad it is. Mm. And when I discovered this path to relief, I wanted to share with everyone so they don't need to suffer as I did. Right, right. Now, I think we need more people in the world to do that, right? To share these stories of hope because you do go online and it's very easy to get stuck in the negative and the fear and all the bad examples or the failure stories and stuff. So it's really nice to have success stories like this. And it's hope, but there is one element to that. 
to really see what is the root cause of the tinnitus. To stop looking in your ears if your ears are okay, because it's a blind way. Yeah. But when you start looking from the neurology point of view, you will start breaking the cycle. And when you measure it, you will see that it is increasing and it will calm you down. And this calming down, it will inc- decrease it even, even more. So that's the opposite of the vicious cycle. That's the virtuous cycle. And did you, did you come back to those root causes throughout this period where you were walking this new path and doing all of this work? Were you still engaged in the emotional work and the psychological work at the same time? Or is it something that you were able to, like, is that work complete have you have you confronted those childhood issues are you yeah what is your well-being like these days emotional psychological well-being yeah after i cured tinnitus i stopped the psychotherapy but then i found out that i sometimes i'm anxious mm-hmm. or i feel fear so i started to go to psychotherapy again and it was not like psychotherapy, which I underwent before, but I found out somatic experiencing by Dr. Peter Levin. Yep. And yeah, I started to go to somatic experiencing to work on some traumas, which were cause- causing this anxiety, mm-hmm. even if the tinnitus was cured already, because I knew that when I work on myself with tinnitus, my life well-being increased a lot. So when I feel not so good, I want to have bad life. So I started to go to psychotherapy, even if there, there was no physical condition, only psychical. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, we, we don't, like you are saying earlier with the gunpowder, we don't want the gunpowder to build up. So we need yeah, to... Yeah, 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 exactly. And I, I think I'm also hearing a lot of similarity with my journey because through working with chronic pain and, and managing it and overcoming it, you get hooked on well-being, right? You realize actually just how different your life can be when you prioritize well-being. And it's not a selfish exercise because then you realize that when you prioritize your well-being, you are able to show up for other people and to serve them and to support them so much better than when you are low energy and stressed. And the last thing you have capacity to do is... is and to- also for your kids, for your wife, for your friends, you are like... Yeah, you're there, you're showing up, you know, and, and, and uh, yeah. yeah, so I, I can resonate with that. So the tinnitus has stopped, but the work has not stopped for you. You're still, still doing yeah. that. One thing changed during tinnitus, because after tinnitus, I found out that when I don't feel good, I'm not afraid to ask for help. I'm not ashamed anymore. I don't need to be a strong guy who solves everything by himself. Yeah, who doesn't cry for 18 years. And he needs any help and everything. (laughs) I want to let you go soon, but I want to know what your friends and family think about this change because it sounds like you're yes you're still peter but you're a very different person now worldview is different how you think about well-being is different even you know what you consume how you roller skate is different have your friends and family commented on on these changes that you've gone through yes yes definitely first family was not very happy because i must say in our family the like crying man was something strange yeah, sure. So they didn't like the change. And also I quit the manager like position or director position in the corporation. It was also strange for them. So it was hard. Yeah. With my friends, which I did the extreme sports, most of them I don't meet anymore. Because they are still in this adrenaline rush. Right. And we don't have the same interest interest anymore. Yeah, sure. So today I have friends, even from childhood, but we are now closer. And I have some new friends and I 
change adrenaline for humor, for say, or for smiling or, or something like that. So I like to smile. I like good company. I like humor. And I don't need to do some extreme things anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's brilliant. That's brilliant. It just sounds to me like the general level of awareness just went up so much, right? Mm -hmm. um, which comes from, uh, and a lot of that comes from working with the body. I mean, we are so disconnected from our bodies most of the time, then we get sick or we get injured, we get ill. And if we walk the path that you've walked and I've walked, we become so whole again. You know, we go from being this mind and body into this whole being and it just, yeah, it, it really wakes you up. I mean, you're accessing all your senses again and you're really experiencing life directly rather than just thinking about it. <laughs> you know? And I feel my body today because I was so disconnected from body. Mm. I, I think that before I didn't feel it a lot. For example, today I exercise every day. I exercise with bars and also I do animal flow. Right. I, like it a lot. I like hiking a lot. And I eat healthy because I love this exercise so much. So I want to regenerate by one day. Yeah, if I, I will like eat some junk food, I will not be able to go to the countryside and, and exercise another day because yeah, I yeah, yeah. the priorities have, have changed. Yeah. Right. So I still love sport by different sport. I don't need to compete anymore sport is more like meditation for me i like to do it by myself alone or with my dog yeah in countryside i don't go to gym anymore this is changed from covid because it was closed so i started yeah. to practice outside spending more time outdoors yeah also very very curative very healing to be in nature yeah <laughs> yes Peter, I want to thank you so much. I want to hear before you go anything kind of in this area when it comes to tinnitus mm -hmm. and your work in that area. Is there anything exciting happening for you at the moment? Right. What was exciting for me was like work of Howard Schubiner. Yeah. And I encourage everybody with tinnitus to read his book or watch the podcast, your podcast or other podcasts, because then you will understand how this chronic tinnitus slash pain start and how this cycle is created and how it can be disconnected. Yeah. And I think what's wonderful about the doc, so after you listen to this podcast, please go and listen to the, the one. Yeah. Now. But what's really wonderful about his work is that it is science-based, evidence-based, research-based, but yeah. then it is, it is infused with compassion with wisdom, with love. And, and I think that's, that's something we need more of, right, in the medical system. So yes, we want the science and the data and the technology, but we also need the compassion and the awareness and the wisdom and, and the love too. So yeah, the emotional aspect of, of chronic pain, not just when we're suffering from it, but actually causing chronic pain, causing chronic conditions is, is very little understood still. So the more people who understand that, the better, yeah. Thank you for bringing this up because TLC is very important in healing process. Yeah. So find someone who gives you tender, loving care, some friend, some therapeutist, someone, because when you are with these people, your stress level and fear level decrease yep. and then you will be able to see the things from other perspective. Mm. Because when you are in stress, you have this tunnel vision. Narrow view. Yeah, tunnel vision. Yeah. View, yeah. And you are not able to see other possibilities. But when you, when you are in tender loving care, you will be able to see more and more possibilities. And in the wider view, I believe that there is a healing. Yeah, no, that's a lovely point to to end on. And it sounds like your dog has also been giving you a lot of TLC. Yeah, yeah. definitely. <laughs> well, Peter, thank you so much. We'll put some links to the blog that you mentioned, your book and things in the show notes. Just really appreciate it. I, I hope that many people with tinnitus can listen to this and, and get some hope and be inspired and then go on a similar journey to the one that you went on. So thank you. Thank you so much. 
Yeah, it is my wish. And thank you, Karim, for great questions and having me. Yeah. Thanks again for listening to the Back to Being podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, you can subscribe or follow to receive news about future shows. Till next time, be kind to yourself and others. I wish you well.